Morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you're at, ladies and gents. I am Kure Isagami, your resident tinkerer and metarotter, and this is the Metarot News Network, bringing you all the latest developments and happenings with our favorite pet fighting robot series. Now, as we crest into week two of the Rockman X collaboration, things are only going to pick up in terms of just who we have coming this week and the rewards that can be earned. Albeit, the event itself will not offer a whole lot in comparison to what we started off with, as we only have one model of the collaboration going live, and just a couple minor rewards as well to obtain, that still is no reason to knock anything else that this event has to offer, because this is a very exciting collaboration, and lots of very useful and limited time resources can still be earned all the same. But, with that being said, let's go ahead and jump right into what was officially announced this week, starting of course with the gotcha banners and who to expect coming forward. Starting this next week up, of course, we do have the introduction of everybody's favorite red-bodied uh, Maverick Hunter, RMX-03 Elite Zero, with a kit of Colonel, Anti-Effect, a, a brand new skill called Rapid Attack, Biped Legs, and the leg ability of Double Edge. Now, for folks that have started in the event, we already kind of have an idea of what to expect with Zero, so this really is nothing new aside from just some information that was given to us this morning on what to expect on how Rapid Attack behaves. But, just in the short of that, is that it behaves very similarly to Count Attack, where the more times you use it, the more powerful it gets executive. The difference is, compared to Count Attack, which will bookmark your stacks and only goes up to a certain point, Rapid Attack can keep going with endless stacks, but you lose all of those stacks the moment you use something else. So Zero is going to be a very, very niche kind of fighter, I guess you can call it right out of the gate, but is most certainly suited for long extended fights where he has to stay on the field as long as possible to keep those going. Of course, the longer he's on the field, the more angry and the more dangerous he gets. In addition to Zero, we do also have popular reruns of RPL Zero Raffault, with Wide Repair, Anti-Air, Hyper Tornado, Biped Legs, and the Leg Ability of Absan. And then in addition to him, we also have KMG Zero Abyss Greater, everyone's favorite, kind of, King Squid type from the days of Metarot 2, with a kit of Missile, Double Sacrifice, Sea Legs, and the Leg Ability of Aim. We have a very solid roster and a relatively small one, I'd say, through the course of this week. So, it's going to be a little easier on rubies compared to how it was last week with Full Armor X and Baba Pride. On the topic of those two, they will still be available if Zero doesn't quite pique your interest. And being, a, being completely honest, we still don't quite know what to expect of Sigma just yet. But right now, Full Armor X is going to be the big one that everyone's going to want to shoot for just because of the stats that he does bring to the table and the kit that he does have offered to him. But again, those two will be sticking around and Zero will be joining them until the very end of the collaboration in late March. So I am excited to see what Sigma will bring to the table and just based on what we see with X, Zero, and, Pro and uh, Vile alone, Sigma's got some big shoes to fill to see if he's going to be worth the ruby drop once he does go live next week. In addition to the gotcha banners for Fierce Battles this week, it is going to be yet another full roster of six full bots. And starting that lineup, we have on this top row, uh, MON02 Kiru Mashura, the Red Monkey, with Heel Trap, Double Sword, Biped Legs, and the Leg Ability of Spearhead. Next to him and his counterpart twin is MON03 Iru Mashura, the Blue Monkey, with Heel Plant, with, with Repair Plant, Double Freeze Shot, Biped Legs, and the Leg Ability of Gunman. And then lastly on this top row is PLC-01 Speed Alert with Mobile Boost, Thunder, Rifle, Wheeled Legs, and the Leg Ability of Emergency. On this bottom row we have MOL-0 Horny Double, the Horned Lizard type, with Fire Shot, Double Missile, Wheeled Legs, and the Leg Ability of Desert type. We have HKG Zero Hawk Dacker with Triple Wave, Flight Legs, and the Leg Ability of, of uh, Excel. 
And then last but not least, HK HWK0 Fly Falcon with triple napalm, flight legs, and the leg ability of a sail. So, as you see, we have a lot of really good skills that can be put to very good use almost immediately at the beginning of this next week going into the patch. And there are a lot of very viable skills that anyone can use, whether that be a newcomer just starting out, or a seasoned vet looking for something to fill in a hole in, in their particular team build. A lot of um, AoE skills such as, say, Fly Falcon's Napalm definitely found a lot of use with AoE attacks, um, despite his being a scatter thanks to Silent Leader and the ability to flush out an enemy leader a whole lot easier. With that being said though, for MVPs of the week, I would have to give those to Horny Devil and Irumashiro specifically. Irumashiro in particular because Free Shot is always welcome to have on any team that you need to be able to stop someone cold and buy yourself just a few extra seconds of time. Whereas with Horny Devil on the other hand, his legs alone make him immensely worth it because wield legs means that he has very high base mobility, but the ability of a desert type means he has S rank on a terrain that pretty much any other type would have a lot of difficulty on. Especially if you want to try to keep from using flight legs and get sniped with anti-air in that respect. Now with event stuff going live, this is going to be officially wave 2 of the collaboration of our 3 week run. For this time of the collaboration, we have even more limited time rewards to be earned around. This time, no special meta rocks or, or event parts, unfortunately. But this week, we have the opportunity to earn the Chameleon Medal with a mastery in melee shooting and support and leg mastery in, bi in biped, multi, and sea base. Chameleon is also a pretty well-known and iconic medal since the early days, so it is nice that we finally have that one available as well. In addition to the Chameleon Medal, we can also earn two more commemorative profile banners to use on our profiles to signify what we earn from the event from collecting. We can also earn two more event BGMs, uh, Sigma Stage 1 and 2 in particular and specifically. Then we can also earn more NFRPS chips and more limited time resources and rubies to be earned and collected through the course of this event. So pretty much the same as it was last week with more with bro with uh, profile banners, events, uh, event rewards, and a medal, but just not in any particular event parts this time around. Now as how the event will behave, however, unlike how it was this week with it being milestone based, this event is going to be ticket based. So I highly suspect that this week and next week are going to be um, ticket based in particular, and in that respect, they are going to be mixed parts encouraged. So instead of using say your set full armor pride uh, full armor x or vava pride instead you'd be mixing up the parts across the team to maximize your bonuses on the topic of those bonuses in particular in terms of blue ticket bonuses wrath vaults abyss greater and god emperor will give you a plus three bonus per part equipped uh, hunter x will give you a plus two part equipped and the fierce battle will give you a plus one each for meta rotters and blue ticket bonuses, uh, Hikaru and Iki at SR rank will give you a plus three each. Uh, R rank of those two will give you a plus two and N rank a plus one, respectively. So again, this is going to be very recommended that you do not use pure sets, but spread the parts out to maximize your bonuses. And one other thing to note on these is that the bonuses will not stack. Only the highest one counts. So if you use, say, Hunter X with, say, uh, Death Missile from God Emperor's Arm, you're going to get a simple plus three bonus for blue tickets and nothing more, so do keep that in mind. For silver tickets, of course, Elite Zero will be leading that bonus at plus three per part, where Full Armor X and Baba Pride will give you a plus one each. The Lab Meta Rodders, Anise, and Kirara in their cosplay skins will give you a plus three, and of course, Standard R rank um, Anise will give you a, a plus one for that silver ticket bonus as well. So do make sure that you get a chance to mix those up. If you manage to collect the Meta Rodders early, this might be a relatively easy event for you because you already have a pretty good head start on collecting the uh, premium tickets, I'm going to call them for lack of a better term. And a good chunk of the event, God Emperor in particular, already is has been available. So you already have him that you can rely on as well for those early blue ticket bonuses as well. In terms of other event stuff that is also going live this week as well, we do at last have a limited time super invasion that will be going live as well, uh, featuring Hunter X and later Full Armor X and Elite Zero as well. I do highly suspect that with this being a collaboration super invasion, it's going to be very simple with just overclocked medals and nothing more. So that usually means to bring your best game, fight your hardest, and go collect your free 10 rubies very easily. 
I do suspect in the final week of the collaboration, we probably will see another Super Invasion featuring Fixer Sigma and Baba Pride, of course, since we have a protagonist and an antagonist kind of thing, but of course, only time will tell going forward. We also have daily mis uh, event missions all coming back once again this week, just as it was the previous week, where you can earn um, additional ruby shards to, to stockpile and collect on your emergency ruby fund, as well as collecting further gacha tickets for the limited time col collab banner, which has a chance to earn not just in particular the permanent pool, but also a couple, a, a small handful of limited time bots that are also available in it at any, that are limited as they come and go. So these missions are very easy to complete, basically just farm the event as far as you can and go complete the super invasion, Nothing really special, you could probably have this done in a couple of days if you, keep, if you keep on top of it. Now in terms of that, in terms of uh, community stuff, stepping away from the games for a minute, we are still always looking for translators to assist us with any translation projects or endeavors. Right now, Metaroth 3 is still in the tentative completion stage, so we still need a lot of bug testers and, clean, and uh, play testers just to kind of double check and make sure everything's behaving as it should. We would love to start working on other projects such as Metarots 4 or 5 or Navi, or even start working on the manga, which, which fairly recently started picking up interest as well, but we need the manpower to do so. So if you are knowledgeable in coding or cleaning or Japanese and have some time on your hands, or if you know somebody that might be interested in helping out, definitely have them reach out to us and we can try to get them in touch with the right people to fill them in on what has been done and what still needs done up to this point. Now for the weekly art highlights here on the MNN, instead of highlighting art pieces, I decided to touch base on in our uh, resident paint shop channel in our community Discord, and of course on Twitter where I found these as well, and decided to highlight some of the uh, player builds and player colors that they have come up against. This one here, my Twitter user VectorN decided to emulate the use, uh, the design of the Mandalorian and the child, as you see here, and honestly, I, I, I really like this. I'm, I'm not much of a Star Wars nerd or anything like that, but I am knowledgeable in who the Mandalorian is and what he brings to the table, and I have to say that's a very, um, that's a very uh, true-to-life rendition and translation of the Mandalorian and the Child there, as best as you can see fit anyway. And I really do like how that came out with uh, Baba Pride's head. And this one here, by our own resident Fiery Blitz in our community Discord, decided to emulate everyone's favorite uh, crap guide to D&D and crap guide to Mon Hun Master. Uh, Joe Cat here with a very unique and very iconic and creative take on the design. I really like how this came out as well, and it kind of sparked a little of an interest in a bunch of other people trying it just for fun, ranging in designs between using uh, Attack Tyranno's head or Coup Vibert's head or different shields or swords and whatever. But it was very fun. I really did enjoy seeing a lot of those and wonderful pro and wonderful work to that as well. One final note to close out, as a friendly reminder, I am always looking for translate. I'm always open to, to um, commissions. I can do 2D art, I do 3D art, um, I can do 2D models as you see here, live, uh, live 2D ready to rig and cut up. I can do 3D models fully rigged from the ground up and textured ready to go for any platforms you want to use them on. I can do standard art and emotes of varying levels of degree and um, detail. Um, and I do like to keep my prices very affordable as well for any new content creators looking to get stuff early on, or for anyone that's looking for stuff without actually breaking the bank to do so. Um, an extra note on this, I am going to continue advocating for this because I'm kind of in need of money. Um, my funds have been incredibly tight and they are going to continue getting tighter if things don't change. So if you do know anyone that might be looking for anything, or if you yourself might be interested, definitely feel free to reach out to me. We can most certainly try to make something happen. But with all that being said, I do believe that covers everything for this week's episode. So like I said, not a whole lot of new stuff since it's mostly stuff we kind of expected or kind of anticipated and uh, kind of already got a glimpse of Zero last week as an NPC to the event. But still a lot of very exciting stuff all the same. Especially since it's made clear that Zero is going to be definitely a very big competitor in the uh in the uh, leg stats boost leg abilities that were uh that that um kind of started going live uh full armor x with uh darkness as an example uh zero suicide and colonel with high fly zero and urza time with double edge and so on and it looks like it's going to be a really big competition to see just who has the best in which stack going forward but with that being said, if you'd like to know more, you can follow us below on Facebook at the Metarot News Network page and the Metabots Forever community on there. In the Facebook community as well, I'm honestly shocked how fast it's been growing just in the past several months alone. 
Just last night, I was taking a look at it and found that, to my amazement, it grew to over 10,000 members and it's still growing. Never once since that community was founded seven years ago, yes, seven years ago actually, that the community would spike and grow and swell to the kind of growth that it has now and become that global headquarters and hub for everyone to gather and talk about our favorite little fighting robots. So I'm very proud to see that growth and I'm happy to see how far that and the Discord community will grow in the future. On the topic of Discord, you can also reach out to us in Discord as well in the link provided and in the comments below. This allows you to keep an even closer ear to the ground on the action. This includes any new links to uh, merchandise or announcements, contests or anything like that, or my weekly episodes um, to, go, to keep up to date on anything there. That is the first place you're going to hear the news before it goes anywhere else. One other thing to make note of as well as a final reminder, uh, we are hosting our own very first um, PvP tournament in the Discord as well. So if you'd like more information on that, join our Discord and keep up to date on that. The official first day of the contest will be the 4th of March. So about this time next week or so that we will be going live with that and see just how far it goes and just kind of field test our rule set and see just how well it works. You can also reach out to me personally on Twitter at Itsagamikura if you have any questions or feedback or comments or would love just to stop in and say hello. I leave my DMs open on purpose for that very reason. So don't be a stranger, feel free to drop on and say hello. If you are a content creator, streamer, VTuber, whatever, or if you're looking for a commission, I leave my DMs open on purpose for that very same reason. So don't be a stranger, reach out to me and say hello and I'll certainly get back to you when I can. You also give these wonderful supporters and followers of the Metarock community as well, Silvalion041 and, Maruka, and uh, Marukata, who do wonderful, wonderful work for the Metarock community, doing a lot of fantastic work, uh, and even designed a lot of official models that have been used in Metarock S, and even right now we're actually responsible for the uh, X and Zero designs in particular through the use of the collab. But that, with all that being said, as always, I do appreciate you all for stopping by just as you always do. But until next time, this is your host, Kara Isagami of the MetaRot News Network, signing out.